Hello and welcome to another episode of 5 Games 5 Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk There are a few versions of dominoes around for the Electron, and Blue Ribbon's version here was one of the last to appear. It has two features that make it stand out from its contemporaries. Firstly, it's in full colour, and secondly, it includes a variation on the standard game called Fives and Threes. If you play the standard game, or Domino Out as it's called here, you simply draw seven dominoes and need to get rid of them all. Planning ahead is crucial, and you have a distinct advantage because you can think ahead, but your computer opponent can't. Unless the computer is extremely lucky, therefore, you win every game you play. Fives and threes is a variant whereby you still have to get rid of your dominoes, but you score points in a different way. You add together the numbers on the two ends of the outermost domino, and if this can be divided by three, you get that number of points, and likewise with five. So, if you add up six spots and you divide by three, you get two, so you get two points. If you add up five spots and you divide by five, you get one, so you get one point. The playing area is much smaller than the space you need to play dominoes, and that's probably the reason why you only get seven dominoes each. But it's a good game, despite these limitations. Creepy Cave is a platform game, in which you are chasing after a mischievous ghost who has stolen the key to your front door. To get it back, you need to brave dripping lava, conveyor belts, vampire bats and death-defying leaps. Personally, I'd have just called Locksmith. The game runs full screen and it's very colourful. You run left and right and you can jump by pressing shift. You have a great deal of control over jumping too, and learning this is the key to making progress through the screens. Before you can escape each screen, you must collect all the crucifixes on it. No information as to how many screens you need to cover is given either. I've made it as far as screen 11 myself. You need accurate timing on those levels, but thankfully not pixel perfect timing. So the only real problem in Creepy Cave is that when you jump you need to be sure of where you're aiming for. You don't bang your head on platforms, you move through them, and occasionally this can result in you thinking you've made it safely onto one of them when you haven't. This is fairly playable and engaging, and a lot better than many Electron platform games. Joe Blade 2 is a gorgeous monochrome game where the object is to roam around, collect items and play puzzle games. The instructions for the game could be clearer. They're more concerned with telling you about what a swell guy Joe Blade is than actually what to do. Maybe because telling you that you need to play 16 puzzle games sounds a bit less compelling than kicking punks in the head. Yes, you can do your fair bit of neck chopping action to be sure, but the main object is to find 16 men. These men look suspiciously like flashes in raincoats to me. Anyway, when you walk into them they give you a game to play which involves getting the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 into order. These little sub-games can be quite tricky, but never impossible. You have to complete 16 of them to win. There's a time limit, but frankly there's so many clocks around that reset it that it's almost irrelevant. The bins too don't really seem to matter. Walk into them and your score increases, but that's it. I think the original Joe Blade is preferable, simply because Joe Blade 2, although good, feels a lot more robotic. They gave him back his gun for Joe Blade 3. Alas, Joe Blade 3 didn't come out on the Electron. If you call a game Bun Fun, then you get your audience's hopes up. The premise of fun conjures up ideas of wackiness and having a laugh while you're playing it. You can probably guess where this review is going. You might get a bun or two in this game, but you're going to be very disappointed by the fun factor. Basically, Bun Fun's a variant on a reaction game. You're in control of one spout that drops icing sugar and another spout that drops walnuts. The idea is that as each basic bun comes along on the conveyor belt, you press one key to coat it with icing and another to finish it off with walnuts. All this really means is tapping at the keyboard in the rhythm of the buns. You'll earn a few pennies for each tasty bun that you create and continue till you've created so much waste that the machinery blows up. After that, you get asked if you want to play again. No thank you. Bun Fun looks like the type of game that you find in the pages of a magazine. That's probably where it should have ended up. With better sprites and smoother animation, I do think there's a good game here, but as it is, I think one game's enough for anyone. Frack is a game which, for many Acon Electron players, needs no introduction, because it was the direct cause of hundreds of hours lost in their childhood. Written by Orlando, the game is a monochrome sideways scrolling ladders and levels game. You play a caveman equipped with a yo yo. You need to progress by knocking the big sprites like Scrubblies, Hooters and Poglets off their perches. At the same time, you need to avoid balloons which rise from ground level and daggers which fly diagonally from top to bottom left. There's usually only one way to complete the maze too, and dare to put one foot wrong and you'll lose a life, 
uttering the mock expletive Frack. I'm not quite sure why it was that Frack was and is so adored. I'd give it marks of 10 out of 10 for frustration alone. Each level was obviously designed to drive the player completely out of his mind trying to figure out how to complete it. I'd hazard a guess the randomness of the moving nasties with the strategy required to deal with the stationary ones is what makes it so addictive. Winning a level feels like beating a world champion athlete. The Electron version has a screen designer too, if you fancy playing about with the level designs.